Hi YouTube, <clears throat> today I'm talking about these laden capacitors, uh, salt water capacitors, you know there's a few names out for them, I'm not quite sure what uh, what the difference is with the laden and salt water, it might be the same, I'm not sure, but um, anyway, I'm going to show you what I've been making, uh, how you start off, you just get a glass bowl, a glass bowl, a glass um, jar, say a ragu bar, uh, jar or an old uh, jam jar or whatever, and what you do, you get some tin foil, your uh, foil paper, like this stuff here, kitchen foil. And what I do, I fold it, o I fold it over, so it's um, in half, and then I wrap it around, and I get it up to around about to before the neck starts to curve in. And I stick it on at the bottom, and that's across the crease where it overlaps, where it comes on at the end, and then. Fill it up with um, water. I, I usually use uh, lukewarm water because uh, it helps to uh, helps the salt to uh, evaporate, you know, uh, dissolve. So I fill it up to water there, and I've put four tablespoons of um, salt, your table salt, into the, into the water, and then I add around about that much oil just to cover the top because it stops the water from uh, evaporating and they, I, I think they work better anyway with a bit of, bit of oil on the top. You can see there's a bit of oil on the top there, look, can you see? So that's all dissolved now and then what I do myself with the lid I make quite a good fair hole in the top so that when it goes over the top like so and it's loose isn't it so what I do is on the bottom flatten these down best you can get a piece of plastic like so pierce the hole I normally I just get a pair of scissors and stick it on the top there like that oh sorry you can't even see me I stick it on the top there like that put a hole in the top of the plastic it's very hard to do with one hand It's not going to go in. There you go, like so. And then what I do, I get the heat, the uh, glue gum, good old Dremel, and of course trim the sides, and I stick it to the bottom to the base of this like this, and then when when it's on when it's on the lid. Sorry guys, I'm it's because I'm using this phone and trying to do the video and everything else, and I'm not watching what I'm doing. So when the lid's on the top like so, and the plastics like, and this is like this, yeah, I'll just try and zoom in a little bit better. There we go. And it'll be like that. It's basically it's not touching the sides, so you've got more of a better chance of it not arcing from here to here when you've got the voltage going through the um, jars. So this is. Um, and afterwards, of course, get some insulation tape and just put a bit around the end there. It just helps a little bit more from the arcing. So, when you've done that, I get these. And this is um, brass and brass copper strips, I think. I think they're copper strips, yeah. Stick a piece onto the side. It's nice and tight against it. And get it up to about... Get it to about there, up with the tape. So you can stick it on and then just overlap it. So it's just like that lot. Now, as I was saying, with the centre pin, what I've done, because it's loose around and it's going to be, I tried gluing it, but it, it just comes away and it's flapping about to the, inside the jar. So the best thing to do with that is to get some plastic strips like so, okay? Put a hole in each side, thread it over your bar, and then get the other side as well and then thread that over the bar and then stick them on so they're on like that okay and then do three so you've got one like that one like that and then one like that and then stick it inside the jar and then it won't flap around in the bottom now this was I've done the same to this one and I've glued the top and even so that is really solid it ain't gonna go nowhere guys because if you don't you can have a little bit of play and before you know it you can have water coming through and it's gonna start leaking because I've got that plastic bit on the underneath and it's really tight against the bar and plus it's heat glued all the way underneath, glued underneath with the glue gum okay and I've done all the top as well like that, I mean look at that 
pretty good finish guys right now for the thing we've all been waiting for time to test it so so what you do is let me just switch this on this is a six and a half kV um, high voltage little um, flyback transformer inside there it's not the same as what you get in TV it's a bit different I'm not going to go into it but um, I'm going to switch it on anyway where are we right okay And I'll show you the difference before and after. Right, this is bef before. Okay. I'm going to switch it off. Because I need to connect this. I'll just make sure. Right, now I'm going to put that onto there like so. So I'm keep going off. Keep going off on what I'm doing. It's very hard to do things when you're holding a camera as well and trying to work and show people what you're doing. Right then, I'm going to have to swap hands for this. Make some racket don't it, that uh, high voltage thing. Right, guys, this is very loud, so just turn down your volumes before I do it. Okay, right, here we go. And there you go guys, I've got four more to do and then when they're finished, um, this, is a, this is a project towards making a Tesla coil using a flyback, um, I've, I'm, I've got to try and get the spark gap working correctly, um, unfortunately I've tried capacitors and it just arcs over, no, no arcing like it's been through a capacitor, it's just normal arcs, I've tried all different kinds of capacitors and I've seen these being used on the internet with the flybacks towards the Tesla coils and they work fantastic so this is what I'm doing this is the video of how I'm doing it take care of yourself guys and um, please rate and comment and I'll speak to you again